Hey everyone, this is Wobby Wallaby. Today I'm going to cover Gunslinger farming on the new Soul Hunting Grounds map. I'll show you how I used a budget setup to earn 21.4 million zenny a day, and of that, 9.4 million is raw zenny. Gunslinger farming is much more difficult than Stellar Hunter, so a lot of tweaking is required. However, once you optimize your character, you will be able to outfarm Stellar Hunters, and you'll know why Gunslinger is the best farming class in the game. I've seen many Gunslinger videos where people have very high deposits, like 70%, so I'm trying to help out people with lower deposits. My challenge was to efficiently farm this map with 29% deposit and to also use as budget-friendly gear as possible. In this video, I'll cover 1. Minimum requirements 2. Farming targets 3. Farming spot 4. Advanced ruins 5. Gear 6. Attributes 7. Overall stats 8. Oracle mirror 9. Acer Monument 10. Guild Buffs 11. Skills 12. Pets 13. Foods and 14. My Farming Data First is Minimum Requirements Gunslinger is not an easy class due to how the auto-attack AoE works. The first requirements are the Ruins. You must have the third line Flight Fire Shooting Star Ruin. The homing missiles is the AoE that comes from doing auto attack. The third line is mandatory, and ideally your first line is as high as possible, so the chance to launch a homing missile is very high. Mine is currently at 66%, which makes it a little worse than Star Hunter's Meteor Fission. I talked with other people who had 75% or higher as their first line, and that led to some great results. The homing missiles do have an advantage over Meteor Fission, since it tracks the monsters, so the monsters don't need to be next to each other, which is not the case for Meteor Fission. The next requirement is you need to have a good mix of skill damage, ignore defense, auto attack damage, and critical damage gear. The homing missiles rely on the skill damage and ignore defense. Your auto attack damage is greatly influenced by your auto attack damage percentage and critical damage. You need to balance it such that both your auto attack and homing missiles one shots monsters. This is the tricky part and requires a lot of tweaking. Penetration percentage is good for both, so it's nice to have as much as possible. The next requirement is you need to have a good adventure handbook. Gunslinger is not great for new players. You definitely need a minimum of 20% attack deposits and around 2,000 attack for this map. My adventure handbook is currently at 2,162 attack, 2 and my attack percentage deposit is at 29%. The last requirement is you need to unlock the map buffs on the hunting ground maps. You can watch this video to see how to unlock the map buffs. You'll be able to get 10% damage increase, 20% physical damage increase, and 30% move speed increase. These are incredibly important if you lack damage. I could not one shot monsters here without these buffs. Also the move speeds are important as it helps you run to your next target faster. Next are the farming targets. The easiest map is Soul Hunting Grounds. The primary target is Wandering Spirits, which are undead, formless, and medium. They spawn very densely at the bottom right side of the map, and they're easier to kill compared to the other monsters. The secondary targets are Horns, which are Earth, Insect, and Medium. Watch out for its high defense. My homing missiles had issues one-shotting this, as my ignore defense is low. However, my auto-attack can one-shot it. You'll occasionally hit horns, 
which is why I added this as a secondary target. Your primary concern is to one-shot wandering spirits. Lastly is a Reaping Raven, which is demon, shadow, and small. This is the hardest monster to kill on this map, and you'll need really good gear, runes, and deposits to one-shot this. Next is the farming spot. The optimal spot is at the bottom of the map in Soul Hunting Grounds. The Wandering Spirits are most dense here, and you can often avoid hitting other monsters as well. There's a spot that spawns horns only at the top of the map, but I find the density to be very poor and is often flooded with stellar hunters, so your character will just end up running back down. Next are Advanced Ruins. I start with Advanced Ruins first, because honestly, you shouldn't play Gunslinger if you don't have the Flight Fire Shooting Star Ruin with the third line and a decent first line. The homing missile is a challenge, and you'll need to tweak your skill damage and ignore defense based on how low this is. Mine is at 42%, which is a little bit low. The rest of the ruins are optional. I've seen many people just fill up the ruins with tons of minor ruins that increase their damage. One other notable ruin is the Cheating Technique Ruin, which you want to get the third line or a high second line for more agility. The third line means you'll always be able to roll for more agility and move speed, which helps a lot. I'll quickly show my other ruins to fill everything up. For minor ruins, I use Edgy Buff, Destruction Attack, Berserk Attack, Penetration Attack, Dex Buff, Assault Attack, Vit Buff, Element Attack, Armor Break Attack, and Strength Buff. You can also use Size Buff versus Medium Monsters, or the Luck Buff. Next is Gear. I try to use as budget-friendly gear as possible. However, for the gachas, some of these are very hard to replace, so unfortunately you do need good gachas to play Gunslinger. For offhand, I use the plus 15 Bravery Banner with 18% penetration percentage as its random attribute. I use this because it grants crit, luck, and 800 raw auto attack, which is fantastic. Eagle Flute with the physical damage increase random attribute is also fine if you don't lack crit. I found that you need to have about 120 crit on these new maps in order to consistently critical everything. For card, I use the loot card to deal 10% more damage to undead monsters. For armor, I use the voodoo armor with the random attribute damage to medium monsters plus 20%. This is great for dealing with the horns and wandering spirits. It also has 20% attack and ignore defense. If you don't have damage to medium monsters as a random attribute, anything that gives you high damage works. For example, previously I was using my plus 15 truth expositor with 24% attack before switching to voodoo armor which only needs to be refined 10. For cards, I used a Moonak star card for 15% ignore defense. For garment, I used the plus 12 white duke's manteau. This provides skill damage and ignore defense. For card, I use the Celebration Collection card for all attributes plus 3. For footgear, I use the Advanced Sack Teddy Shoes. This gives a lot of critical damage and agi for attack speed. For card, I use the Rainbow Fall card for plus 2% attack. For my first accessory, I use the Dog Serpent for the dex and attack percentage. I use the Greatest General card for the final damage. For my second accessory, I use the Dog Servant again and the Caramel card for dealing with the horns as they are insects. For my weapon, I use the plus 10 Assault Terminator. I use the Skeleton Miner card for dealing with medium sized monsters and the Peko Peko Egg card for dealing with formless monsters, which are the Wandering Spirits. I would have used two Skeleton Miner cards to deal with both horns 
and the Wandering Spirits. However, this card was on snapping, and there was a lot of people trying to get it. For headwear, I used Bashful Moments for damage to monsters. I used the Andre Star card for the penetration percentage. For face, I used Winter Crown. The reason is my auto attack is stronger than my homing missiles, so I need skill damage to make up for it. If you have very high homing missile damage, you can swap for the Illusory Light Mirror, which is good if you lack auto attack. For mouth, I use the Glutunia's Imp for the penetration percentage and the final damage percentage. For back, I use the One-Eyed Captain for the unlimited SP and 30% move speed, which comes from killing targets. For tail, I use Flying Quarterback because my homing missiles are weak. Fluffy is good if your auto attack damage is lower. For Ancient Relic, I use Waste Size for the attack, dex, and attack percentage. Next are Attributes. I max dex and agility, then the remaining is in luck. Every 3 luck will give you 1 crit. I found you need a minimum of 120 crit or sometimes your character will not crit these monsters. Next are overall stats. With Dex B, Luck B, Agi B, and Awakening potions, here are my stats. I also use the skill Rage of Tyrant for penetration percentage. My attack is at 16,609. My move speed is at 148. My attack speed is at 366.1. For all attributes, I have 385 dex, 272 agility, and 227 luck. My penetration percentage is at 67.8%. My critical is at 132. My critical damage is at 103.1%. My skill damage increase is at 14%. My damage is at 68.8%, my physical damage increase is 75.4%, and my ignore defense is at 94.7%. Next is Oracle Mirror. I use the Combustible Knife for the penetration percentage, which will be good for both the auto attack and the homing missile damage. Next is Acer Monument. The Acer Monument is pretty simple. The priorities are the two-sided coin cooldown where there are five nodes, the two-sided coin mastery where there are five nodes. Both of these help to reduce the cooldown and the fixed cooldown for two-sided coin. The other one is the rifling upgrade where there are 5 nodes and they'll give you more hit. For the rest of the nodes, go all out on the offensive ones. For example, I'm able to get 9 edgy, 134 hit, 1068.8 attack, 11% ignore defense, 250.05 refine attack, and 12 luck. Next are guild buffs. Max out all your offensive guild buffs. Prayers give 850 attack. Blessings give 50% critical damage, 20% ignore defense, 20% penetration, 500 attack, fire damage plus 20%, and refine attack plus 200. Next are skills. For my build, I mess around with pistols too, so only copy the rifle skills that I'm highlighting. These are my gunslinger skills. These are my rebellion skills. The important ones here are the two-sided coin, which is really nice since it gives you a chance to get 30 agility and 20% move speed. The third line will guarantee you will always get this. Next is Rifling Upgrade, which is the one that gives you plus 3 meter range, which is great for farming. For Tyrant skills, the only one you need is the Rage of Tyrant, which gives you an insane 30% penetration. For Auto Attack, 
I use the auto attack skill and prepare for elite. Inside prepare for elite, I have two sided coin and rage of tyrant. Next are pets. I use the Osiris if I'm farming on a map where I might die to the MVP. Otherwise, pets that give penetration 2% is great, such as the Moonlight Flower or Mista Talon. If you really lack crit, you can use the Mandagora Seed for 10 crit. Next are foods. Not all map buffs are available right now, so my move speed and attack speed aren't as high as they are in the Komodo maps. As a result, I eat Dex B meals for damage, Edgy B meals for more attack speed, Luck B meals to ensure I have more than 120 crit, Awakening potions for more attack speed, and the original Will Fish Steak for more move speed. You can also eat 6 Satisfied Feasts if you lack penetration percentage. For Elemental Converter, eat the Flame Heart so you can do fire damage. That way you'll do double damage to the Wandering Spirits and to the Horns. Next, my farming data. I am at the bottom of the map. I am in one of the mirrored soul hunting grand maps, so no MVPs will spawn. I show my combat time is at 720 minutes. I get 90 minutes from listening to music, and then 6 mentor potions give me 180 minutes of combat time. I protect party on, and then choose wandering spirits. Once the Greatest General's final damage activates, I am able to one-shot the Wandering Spirit with my auto attack and my homing missile. I go to offline farming for 350 minutes. While it's running, there are times where I can kill 100 monsters per minute or more. This map does get quite busy, so it varies a lot. I hit red stamina, and the summary shows about 8.3 million zenny. I scroll through my drops from the offline battle report. Here are the prices of the new drops. Silver wrapping lace is 740 zenny and Wax Seal is at 727 zenny. I also sell my zenny bag as a light bringer to the NPC for the overpriced skill. Here's my summary. I got 9.47 million raw zenny. Including sellable materials, I got 21.4 million zenny. Even though this is lower than my Stellar Hunter, Gunslinger will still be my second best farming class on this map. In a future video, I'll be sharing some optimization tips that I got from members of the Ragnarok Mobile Community Discord channel, which includes crazy late game gear, very high kills per minute, and even one person who was able to get a daily 14 million raw zenny just from the offline summary. So make sure you're subscribed so you'll be notified when that video comes out. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe.